Hey guys, welcome to my video today. I am gonna try and vlog a little bit. Be one of those like, hashtag real YouTubers. What's up? Hey. Music videos are very stressful. Oh no, mine's a bit bush. What is a, what is a fashion style? More money, more money. <laughs> today I'm gonna talk to you about how I make money as a fashion stylist and a blogger. Let's get into it. became a blogger first and then a fashion stylist but one came after the other very quickly so I started as a blogger I started a blog called the unisex mode about seven years ago and because it was a very specified blog all about unisex fashion it took off pretty quickly um, I originally started it on my own but with some friends contributing and then that kind of whittled down to it being me and one of my best mates juice juice G um, otherwise known as Jess. I am now at the Exposure Press Day with Juice. What's up? Hi. Wait, you're not in focus. We need to get you in focus because my big head is in focus. What's up? Hey. And I've decided today that I'm going to try and wear an outfit that is all of the Snoopy. So Peanuts and Snoopy. I uh, have done actually loads of collaborations over the past couple of years and this is the new Lazy Ove collaboration they've just done. I'll show you now how I am wearing a full head show outfit of different Snoopy collaborations because I don't know I'm a loser or I'm really cool. you can decide but this mirror needs a clean but yeah so I have my Snoopy vans on Snoopy or like Peanuts Levi collaboration and Snoopy Lazy Ove collaboration. How many Snoopy collaborations can you wear in a day in one outfit? Three apparently. Talk me through your outfit choice today. So nice little women's hoodie. Nice, nice. Um, I think it's summer, so I'm wearing like this little dress. But it's and not some, summer. Uh, new Nike <laughs> 6000. Yeah, they're very sick, very nice. Basically, I'm kind of going with this kind of beige gold kind of vibe. She texted me this morning and was like, am I too beige? And I was like, I mean, I mean beige is a look. All beige food makes me feel a bit sick, but I kind of vibes off of a beige outfit. Uh, and we did that for a number of years, but when I first started it and it was just me and I had people kind of like contributing to it, um, I was doing like outfits of the day and it was all like sneaker and streetwear influenced um, and photographers would take pictures of me for brand collabs that I was doing. And when, when that started, they were very much at the beginning of their career, I was at the beginning of my career, um, and they didn't know many fashion stylists, and I was being sent clothes, so they were like, why don't you try styling? Like, you're always being sent clothes, you already have the connections with the brands or the PRs, why don't you get into it? And I had studied fashion design at university, so it all kind of made sense. Um, so I started by styling some models for just some test shoots for some of my mates that were photographers and some makeup artist friends and it just all spiralled from there really. Outfit. Hello, how are you? Hello. I um, had a lot of experience kind of in different things in the industry. I'd done dressing for TV before, I had done dressing for catwalks before, so I wasn't far off going towards being a fashion stylist anyway. Um, and so yeah, uh, I ended up getting, a, getting offered a job uh, in fashion PR and I did that for, for a year and a half which was a really really good experience but very hard work. Um, and I decided eventually to go full-time freelance as a fashion stylist and a blogger and at that point um, I decided to start my own fashion blog just because people especially on Instagram and social media they want to see personal style more than anything and they want to see like behind the scenes of my life as a fashion stylist so that's the blog that I started I already had a website with a portfolio on it of my styling work um, I also have done bits of modelling on and off for years, so I had all these kind of things and I wanted to put them in one place. So I built a new website which had a blog in it. Um, 
and that has done really well and it's been really great because it means that not only do I get to blog about like unisex fashion and then like my styling work, I also get to talk about food that I eat because I'm really specific and I'm vegan and I'm gluten intolerant and I'm intolerant to lots of things. Um, I do fitness and I love fitness and I love makeup so yeah. I now blog about my lifestyle as well as my life as a fashion stylist. Oh, and I thought that I would just let you all know that I did my makeup using this palette, the Cult Cosmetics, okay, it's Cult Candy Cosmetics. Why do they do these things and confuse dyslexia? But yeah, this is the Heavenly Urchins palette and it is so good. Don't judge my makeup skills, I am not a makeup artist, but um, yeah, very fun colors. Yeah, so peace out, my fuckers. Um. So yeah, how do I make money out of all of this? Well, as a fashion stylist, I started, like I said, doing test shoots, and that was with model agencies. That um, I quickly got into doing magazine editorials. So what I would do is we'd get sent all these models, and we'd give the agencies their test shots, which would just kind of like be simple shots of the models. But I'd have all these clothes, and we'd start up the models, and we'd shoot like an editorial. So say we're being sent like four models in a day to shoot test shoots with. Um, I would also style them and we'd keep back some of the images, create an editorial out of them. I'd get like a theme, like for example, I, I remember doing one that was like really like bright bold colours. It was really simple, like menswear, like bold colours for autumn winter, something like that. And I knew a few magazines because I was um, starting to work in fashion PR at the time. So I just sent those in, um, like you, you have to send them in and kind of like see if they like them. And if they like them, they'll publish them online for you. So yeah, you start off by getting published online. You don't get paid anything for that stuff, but it's really good exposure. And they just all spirals from like a small magazine online. I end up getting into their print magazine. And then from the smaller magazines, I end up getting published in bigger magazines and getting approached by those magazines to style for them. Um, also, because I had done quite a lot of stuff in the music industry, uh, if you know me, you'll know what I mean. Um, I had a lot of contacts in the music industry, so I started to quite quickly work with musicians. Um, and I think because of my experience with the music myself, uh, I understood how it felt to be an artist and what it was like to kind of have to work with other people and work with a fashion stylist, for example. So I tend to get on with musicians pretty well um, and those relationships built really quickly. So I did a lot of like music videos to begin with and that was a very good testing ground for the rest of my career. Uh, it's not that, it's just that I need to know what I'm doing on the spot when I'm doing it. So. Music videos are very stressful and they don't always um, have huge budgets, but you learn a lot along the way. So yeah, I started off by earning small amounts of money on like small budget music videos, um, getting like paid little bits to do maybe like test shoots with models with model agencies, um, and it just all spirals from there really. And my styling work uh, definitely helps my blogger work. So. Having those connections within the fashion industry as a fashion stylist connected to magazines, for example, really helped build my portfolio as a blogger and then people wanted to put me, or continue to put me, in campaigns and they just got bigger and bigger. Um, which led me to presenting work and consultancy. What is up guys? So today it is Wednesday and I am about to go off to a Timberland times Loyal Kana event. The previous footage that you would have seen in this video was from earlier in the week. And yeah, come with me and see what happens. Okay, so we are at a Timberland event and there's lots of free plants. Um, do you guys know what your plants are? Green. Oh no, mine's a bit bushy. I mean, we've learned a lot this evening. <laughs> what is this? So it's Jerusalem artichoke with cauliflower puree, cauliflower and parsnips. What? Who are you and what do you do? Charlie and I plant plants. He's lying. He doesn't. He doesn't plant any plants. I do now. I've got two. Okay. Sure. What is a what is a fashion stylist? Let's start there. Um, I style musicians, so I do a lot of like press shots with bands and musicians. Um, I started off very much though by working with magazines, 
So I would style fashion editorials for magazines, which means that you, you either come up with a theme or you get given a theme by a magazine or you base your shoot around the current trend. Um, so I did a lot of that for lots of different magazines and I started to work with artists and celebrities, uh, actors, influencers to style them for magazines as well. My magazine work, which really does not have much money in it, um, led me to getting campaigns with brands and it also led me to working with artists sort of ongoing on more of a full-time basis directly. So, Say I meet an artist because I style them for a magazine, for an editorial which is going to go alongside an interview that they're doing for that magazine, they might like me and want to work with me again so they book me for their music video or their press shots and it just continues from there. Um, and then brands approach me because maybe Foot Locker have a new campaign and they know that I like streetwear and sneakers and I like use it a lot in my editorials with magazines so they're like let's book Ki Kitty to style, I can't even speak anymore. <laughs> Let's book Kitty, that's me, um, to style our new campaign and it just kind of all goes from there. So that's how you make money from being a fashion stylist, people book you to style uh, the artists that they manage or the campaigns for the brands that they manage, work with, work for, etc. Um, I also have done things that are like not very fashion focused, for example I once shot and styled a campaign for Yo Sushi, which was interesting. I've done stuff for makeup brands, I have done stuff for, oh, what have I done, like hair companies, so, you know, focus isn't always, um, fashion isn't always the main focus. Three, so, tell me three your fancy outfits tonight. Oh, hello Chloe. Hello Sam. Versace. Versace. Flashy. You're already in it, you're already in it. Where's the new era store? I need to see my Somewhere face. here. I did not agree for my face to be on the show. Well, we're going to have to have words about that, aren't we? More money! I mean, do you know what I mean? Like, my we face was not allowed inside. to be on the I'm trying to work out. I feel like this, this, this way. I don't Guys. have a clue, but hello. Hi. <laughs> but obviously they need fashion, they need styling because a very key element of any photo is what people are wearing and what they look like. So being a fashion stylist is always important um, and people need to pay you for that. So yeah, it is not easy. You have to build relationships and spend a long time making sure that those relationships are, are kind of... How do you put it? You need people to trust you because they're loaning you clothes that are worth thousands of pounds sometimes. Um, so yeah, they scratch my back, I scratch their back, and it all works nicely. For example, I'll use clothes in a, in a fashion editorial in a magazine where I'm not really getting paid very much, but the outcome is a great photo shoot, but then they'll loan me clothes when I'm doing a campaign that they might not get very much from um, because people might not necessarily know where the brands, uh, like the brands of the clothes that the people are wearing that I'm styling in a campaign for like a hair brand for example. They don't write t-shirt by diesel, you know what I mean, in a hair campaign. But they'll do that and loan those to me because I have used them in also a magazine where it does say t-shirt by diesel. Um, so yeah, that's how I make money as a fashion stylist. Basically, Jesus is on the A storefront and she is half gassed about it and like What's half it? angry about it, the new era one. <laughs> I'm trying to film everything, but you're shy. How can um, you stay shy? I'm not, I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm in a hurry. Oh shit, you've got, you got a DJ? Yeah? Yeah, but I've got to get all them in before 10. I see. But we're not going to get them before 10. I... I'm completely freelance. Um, I did have a title for a while, a freelance title though, at a magazine called Notion Magazine and I was their fashion features editor and then I was their contributing fashion features editor for about two years, I believe. Um, yeah, but I'm completely freelance as a fashion stylist. I don't have an agent or anything. Um, I do it all myself right now, but as a talent and a blogger, I now do have an agent. So I am with a company called Free Focus and they now help look after my campaigns and manage sort of like the business and money side of those things which is really great because it helps free up my time so that I can focus on creating content. So that brings me to how I make money as a blogger. I create content for brands, for example. I've been so busy this week that I forgot to film any of it, although I did film it on stories so I think what I'll do is put some compilations of my fine stories uh, to carry on the rest of the vlog, but it's been pretty wild. I went to a Timberland event, but I did put some of that, I did film some of that on here. 
I went to a Fiorucci Ciroc event last night, which was a bit wild. Maybe there's a new drink that's come out and it is vegan and it is healthy and I'm quite no, quite well known as well being plant based or vegan and being quite focused on being healthy most of the time. So that brand might approach me and say, Do you know what, we've got this really colourful new drink and you're cool and colourful and we want you to shoot content for that and put it on your Instagram. And then they'll discuss fees and rates. Um, they might say, okay, we want one Instagram post and two stories or we want an IGTV video and two stories. So we come up with a price that fits the time it's going to take me to create that content. And that is how I make money as a blogger. It has never been about affiliates for me. I tried that out and I sometimes still use them, but I just think affiliates take so long. Like, so an affiliate link is where you set up with a company, an affiliate company, um, a profile and they give you access to link building um, and the links that you create are uh, like directly uh, associated with you. So I might want to promote a t-shirt from Monkey for example, right? Because Monkey have gifted me a t-shirt and I want to show you guys where you can buy it from. And then with that link that is associated directly to me, every time somebody clicks on it and purchases something, I might make a few pence, literally, or a pound maybe. And don't get me wrong, that's great because, you know, if you're someone that really drives sales and you have um, maybe styling videos on here, it can build up, but I just always focus more on brand collaborations because I am a content creator and I'm a fashion stylist and I love creating content so for me it's more about those brand collabs rather than like the links and trying to sell loads of items of clothes. Um, obviously I style clothes but I'm not really about pushing fast fashion people anyway so yeah. Collabs of brands, they pay me to feature on my blog, on my website, on my Instagram, um, on my YouTube channel etc. That is how I make money as a blogger. Anyway, yeah, oh god, my crazy cabinet that I'm trying to sort out right now. Um, this light is not the one. Let's see if I can get it. I'm like breaking everything. Wait, maybe the bathroom light is better. No, just everything's shit right now because it's dark. Um, whoa, this is bad. So yeah, so I went to a Fiorucci party which was pretty wild last night. Um, I Today I went to a Calvin Klein event. And then on to the final bit, and that is... I also consult for brands and I present now as well. And these things have come from me already being a fashion stylist and a blogger. So yeah, as you can tell, I can talk for days. <laughs> and so people, I suppose, started to realize that I was a fashion stylist that could also talk on camera. And I started to get books to present um, and kind of like present styling features uh, on YouTube, on like small things on TV. Um, yeah, all kinds of things. I've done a bunch of presenting work and it's really fun and I love doing it. So that is another thing. People pay me to present for content that they're creating. It's quite often YouTube um, or like brand collabs, for example. I did some stuff with Primark for their Christmas range. And I know I just said that I don't uh, love fast fashion, but actually there's ways around how you cannot over, over buy fast fashion. I'll talk about that in another video another time, but the one good thing about brands like Primark are that they don't use leather usually, so they're really good for me to share with you vegan alternatives or like plant-based alternatives to like leather jackets for example, and so yeah, that's the kind of stuff that I do when I do work with brands like Primark. Um, yeah, and then the next thing and final thing that I do to make money is I consult, and again, Yes, this is another job title, and another role, but it all comes from me already being a developed and established fashion stylist and blogger. I consult for brands because I've been in this industry for over seven years and I have experience within working with tons of brands and I'm very specialised in my knowledge to do with unisex culture and streetwear and sneakers. So brands come to me to ask me how they can kind of like delve into the unisex world, how they can become... Um, I guess more focused in the streetwear world and the sneaker world, how they can sell their products better to those people. And people pay me for that knowledge because I spent years studying at university, doing jobs for free, working in PR, like the experience that I have on my CV is pretty vast. Um, so yeah, people pay me for that knowledge and being a consultant is a really, really 
uh, important and incredible skill to have and it's something that I value being taken seriously for every single day. It took me a long time to get there though and I say I've been in this industry for seven years but you know I'm an adult and I have been working for a lot longer than seven years. In fact my first job I was still at school so <laughs> um, and I got into kind of got into the fashion industry even before I went to university. Um, I started working on and this is hilarious so info for you guys that other people won't know. <laughs> uh, my first ever fashion job was on a TV show called In the Night Garden. Now if you have children you'll know what that is and if you don't I mean, I don't know why you know what that is, but it's a children's TV show. When I was a kid, we had the Teletubbies, and In a Night Garden is basically like the newer version of that. And I worked on the costume team, so I would like sew up things and, and just help people get in and out of the costumes. It was very different to what I do now. Um, that's the first thing I ever did before. I was very surprised that I managed to wake up and go to the Calvin Klein event. It was a Calvin Klein underwear event. It was like a little breakfast thing. I got to try and, and take home some underwear. Um, and then I went and did a campaign shoot. So I have shot something for Foot Locker. I don't think I can talk about anything else yet um, because it won't be out by the time they put this video out. But it will be out soon and it's a very exciting campaign. It's very cute. And then I went to the gym and now I'm home. And that is it. I'll try to get better at filming on this. It's just so easy to film stuff on your phone though. So yeah. That's how I make money as a fashion stylist and a blogger. I hope that this has been useful to you in any way. Um, I just hope that it's kind of debunked some like myths maybe and helped give you an insight into my job. I'm a freelancer, I work for myself. Yes, I do have a talent agent, but um, I still work for myself. They just assist and help and they are very useful and very great. <laughs> um, but yeah, I make money not working for somebody else and I love it but I worked for many many years working for other people in bars in retail forever I always had retail jobs um, and I worked in Blue Banana for many years and in Topshop and I worked in Size because obviously I had to work in sneaker retail didn't I so yeah this did not come easy it is not an easy job and it took me many years to get here and I worked like seven days a week for years and now I work for my goddamn stuff. And you can do it too. Peace out.